Here's a cake, and it's your favorite cake, but don't eat it, don't even touch it. But if somebody told you, oh, they've made that cake with dog food. You won't touch it. It doesn't feel no. attractive anymore. No. When you understand what sin is to God, yeah. and what sin does to us, yeah. and in that compromise that you may have an appetite for, then you'll be like, no, it's not worth it. Yeah. Okay, so uh, this is Real Relationship, part two. Part two, um, guys. We kind of spoke about, we answered five questions. And mm -hmm. so, got five more questions to go through. Um, and so we're going to kickstart it. How can I prioritize my faith while still making time for my relationship? How do I prioritize my faith mm. while still making time for my relationship? I guess this is when people start dating. Yes. And if you've been someone who's quite busy in life, in mm -hmm. church, you know, you're doing a lot and then you start dating, um, it's about finding time. Yeah. You do need to find time for, oh, if yeah, you're going to date, you then, need to find time. If you can't, then you don't Yeah, you should, you, you, you know, stay single. Stay single. Right. Because you have to find time for a relationship. Yeah. You can't bring someone into your life and, you know, you never, you never want to go out with them, never want to hang with them, never mm. want to talk with them um, because, that's what marriage is going to be. Yeah. Marriage is, even Paul says, you know, uh, the single person can give more time to God. Yeah. The, 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 that's what the Bible says. A single person can But when you're married, actually, it's a different thing, isn't it? Yeah, so yeah. It, it's starting now. So I think you have to, um, you have to find time. But I, I don't, th I think that it, you, you have to, um, I think you should already have certain priorities in place and i think this is why it's good for someone before they date yeah. they have like bible reading prayer yes. church that's um, standard yeah discipleship right. fellowship they already have these things in mm -hmm. place mm -hmm. and then um you know once you have these things these things are like safety cords they're mm -hmm. not like ropes around your neck but they're like safety things that mm -hmm. keep you kind of going yeah exactly. through life it exactly. the, 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 the i guess the illustration i would give it would be like working it's like right. you you have a job right. you work monday to friday mm -hmm. at the end of the month you get paid mm -hmm. then you meet someone you, you you're like i'm in love with them <laughs> and you just want to spend every day with them mm -hmm. so it's now you don't want to go to work mm -hmm. but if you don't go to work then you're going to you lose, lose your job, your job right. and you're going to have no money and then you can't go out on dates then, yeah. so I think it's the same like that. You have to realize that your faith has got you to this place where yeah. you've met this person. They're a Christian. You're a Christian. They seem That's good. You good. seem good. Yeah. But you got to maintain your um, your faith. It has your to, faith. You yeah. got to maintain your mental health, your physical health, your financial health. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it kills the very thing. There's a principle in, in a book that I read, and he spoke about the golden goose, and it's mm. like the. Um, uh, the, what do you call it? The uh, I think it's like a fairy tale. The golden goose. Yeah. The, no, the goose that lays the golden, golden eggs. Egg. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And so if you, so every let's say every day this um, goose yeah. lays an egg. Yeah, it's gold. Yeah, Where it's gold. That? And Where then you could goose? you could sell it, it and and make money. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, um, as your, you think to yourself, I want more money. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kill the goose and get open the, it and get all the eggs out of it. But we know that would be stupid. Yeah, you've killed your blessing. You've killed it because mm -hmm. you, you're going to kill. To get more, you're going to sacrifice the goose mm -hmm. and afterwards you won't get the eggs anymore. No. So that's what you have to realize is that your faith is like the goose. Then and your faith is producing this relationship and yeah. producing blessings and producing all of what a godly person would find would attractive. Produce, exactly. They so if you, if you don't do that, then why would a person... Then the relationship will die. Right. And I think a lot of people have done that, mm. that I've seen. And, and, and I know the pressure of it is that now you've, you, you, you take your whole focus off, the, off your faith. Onto your relationship. Onto your relationship. Right. Your faith dies. Now you and that person don't get on. Now your relationship she's calling you a waste man you're calling her a witch mm. and then um you need counseling you hate each other you mm. break up mm -hmm. you're bitter then you want to leave church right 
and it all stemmed back from you took, you your, took your eyes off your faith your the faith. very thing that was producing this relationship you sacrificed that for more or the very thing that's producing you as a person as a being like but it would have produced the relationship yeah, because would, otherwise the person wouldn't find you attractive yeah. but i'm saying that's what was keeping you yeah like yeah. keeping your principle what you're saying yeah, yeah. Which I, I agree 100 percent of keeping your focus because again it's building your character everything about that your 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 faith is building your faith is building your character so that's why that person saw your character or the person you were and they was attracted they want to get to know you and then you stop doing all that You've, you've, you've break down the very thing that was helping you building your faith. Do you see what I mean? So, no, I agree. No, I get it. I get it. Okay, let's move on. Mm-hmm. How can I handle disagreements with the person I'm dating about faith? Mm. I guess this may be... Okay, let me put this here. There are certain things which are non-negotiable non-negotiable if you disagree about who jesus is then and you disagree about um the trinity yeah all of these things uh, sin um fundamental yeah the fundamental things that we would say constitute salvation yeah uh serotology or whatever it is the study of salvation right if you're not on the same page with that i would say um you need to you need to put it on pause you need to have a serious discussion because those are things that we have to disagree about and mm. we cannot compromise. Um, a Muslim should not be marrying a Christian and a Christian marrying a Sikh and a... Yeah. No, 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 we have to have... The same. And again, it's biblical. It's not that we've just made it up in our head. It's something that the Bible what? describes. Yeah. Do not be unequally yoked together yeah. with unbelievers. Um, but then there are other things that I think you talk about and like what? what do you mean well i think like um you know uh, what would i say um good question um what would what would be the thing like tithing mm. do you both believe in tithing that's true Some you know people don't it's, believe it's not a salvation issue no. you're not going to not go to heaven or hell but do you believe what do you believe about that mm, the principle of time, yeah, yeah and i think that's something that you both got to discuss because mm. that's that's going to be an issue in marriage mm-hmm. um how you discipline children yeah true again yeah how you discipline children you should be discussing that then i think there are other things which might just always be there but they're not really big issues it might be things like um uh i'm thinking off the top of my head no, you know you. like some people your spouse might be like i don't i don't think there should be such thing as christian hip-hop mm. but you do i yeah, don't think that's an issue no. i don't think you have to break up with yeah that. Uh, okay you know yeah. that unless the person is going to start going on a rant about it yeah and campaign against well in case the person don't want you to listen to it then that one might be you might be like yeah but i, I at I, home I, cleaning the hip-hop's going yeah, on I, like, smash well, the... but that's why i'm saying i think you have to be <laughs> You have to let the person... There are things that might mean you might not agree always on. agree on, right. but they're not like salvation issues no. and they're not like tithing or if mm-hmm. it was parenting or, you know, ministry standards, things like that. But then it might be just be things that'd be like, yeah, I don't, I don't think people should do that. Yeah. You know, yeah. hairstyles, yeah. you know, things like that. They have no moral quality to them, but it's just say, yeah, I don't think men should do that or I don't think women should do that. Mm. They have no moral sensual thing to it but we may disagree on those things right and we just disagree that's it yeah you know we 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 agree to disagree yeah in a loving way in a loving way in a loving way so i think there are categories of things yeah and each category then determines the level of um the response okay i agree is it okay to date someone who is no, this this this, this question is not going to work. Is it, oh, not of the same faith. We've yeah, already, we just talked about we've that. Talked about that. Mm-hmm. No, no, <laughs> no, no. How can I maintain my purity while dating? Mm. How do I maintain purity? We kind of like talked about it in the last one, but yeah, how do you remain it? I think it's got to be a goal for you. Yeah, I think that's the the. I think the first thing is you have to think about your relationship with God. Mm. It can't be just a um a borrowed uh standard or a borrowed goal like 
I, I want to be pure because that's what the church says. I yeah. want to be ch- pure just because the pastor says. No, it should be. It has your, to be yours. Your conviction. Yeah, because you just won't be able to maintain it no. if it's not your conviction. Yeah. Um, and so I think you have to, first of all, go into the scriptures, study this thing out, mm. and ask questions from the pastor and the church you're at. Let them give you Bible understanding about purity, what it attains to, what it is, the mm-hmm. dangers of not having it. Because the more you believe it, yeah. the more you'll live it. 100%. With the just shall live by faith. The more you believe it, the more you'll live it. Mm-hmm. If I said to somebody, um, here's your, cause, because the, the, this thing has such a pull. Yeah. The flesh has such a pull because you like one another. That's the reason why you're, you're attracted to start dating that person. So eventually, the, the the urge of like I just want to hug them yeah, I want to be with them this, it's, this, it's pulling you yeah, like this, a magnet yeah this thing has such a pull yeah which more than any other thing that human beings go through mm-hmm. you know sex does sell mm. and then we realize that it's got a, such an a, an appeal to mm-hmm. us and such mm-hmm. an attraction and not only that everywhere we we are in the world we see it yeah it's true we see it everywhere yeah so you have that and if you don't um have that faith that belief that if that's you. not your conviction right you know it's it, it then it, then it's harder to um maintain it so i think that would be first because if i said to somebody here's the f- here's a cake mm-hmm. and it's your favorite cake but mm-hmm. don't eat it don't even touch it don't even put your finger on the top of it um uh, uh and i'm gonna go out the room it people would be you know <laughs> resisting it'd be so hard but if somebody told you, oh, they've made that cake with dog poo. Oh, no. You then won't, you won't touch it. It doesn't feel no. attractive anymore. No, no, no. It, no. It's shifted yeah, because yeah. you now believe there's the something poo. disgusting in yeah, it. Yeah, right. When you understand what sin is to God yeah. and what sin does to us. Yeah. And in that compromise that you may have an appetite for, yeah. that you realize, no, but sin is in this. It will kill me, defile me, mm-hmm. destroy me. Then you'll be like, no, it's not worth it. Yeah. It, 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 no, I don't want it. But yeah. again, I think you have to kind of get the, get those convictions. And put those boundaries. Yeah, I agree. Because even in what you watch as well, that can excite your, your flesh. So you you have to be careful what you watch and what you listen to, music-wise. And anything like that will just think, you know, God help me, as you were saying, reading the Bible and just helping me just to stay on that path of just being pure for that person that you're dating as well. You don't want to make that person trip yeah so you're 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 very aware of the attraction you have for that person but you're constantly in prayer and just say god and be accountable to something like guys i just need you to pray for me because right now i haven't these urges but i don't want to act upon it i just want god just to help you have me. to have wise people around you yeah you have to have the because, because some people are like yeah girl this it, is it, what, it, no yeah you got needs you got needs yeah i understand that but i'm I, i'm not married to this person mm. i want to just hold of need for now so yeah just have people around that can help you and so so um biblically you need to understand why you're doing what you're doing Doing, yeah have a conviction you need to if you have those convictions then everything would fall into that your entertainment your music your um what you're watching online all of these things right it will play into that yeah I think the other thing is prayer. You, mm-hmm. you, we really do need to pray. Yep. Jesus says pray, you know, um, so that you don't fall into temptation. Mm-hmm. Even the Lord's Prayer, uh, at the end of it, it speaks about lead you me not into temptation, temptation. Yeah. but deliver me from evil. Yeah, the so evil there is one. something about prayer mm-hmm. that it really does help us to um tap into a power beyond yeah. ourselves because we can't do it by you can't you can't do it yeah. and so it, 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 and then you, you gotta tap into the holy spirit yeah so the bible uh prayer holy spirit you'll be able to do this yeah godly counseling you know? people around you yeah and repentance if you if you, if you have yeah. if you, repentance if there is um at the small things if mm-hmm. you start to feel even in your thoughts Mm -hmm. and again the devil wants to condemn you with this stuff this stuff god is not condemning us Mm -hmm. but even in your thoughts before you do anything you just realize your thoughts are wandering and things are happening it's there where you come and you say god forgive Mm -hmm. me um the bible speaks about and says 
you know, he is always willing to forgive us. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you, you, you ask God, change my heart. Give me a new heart. Yeah. Restore my heart. Renew my heart. Change my heart. These are promises that God gives us. And so exactly. sometimes when you enter into a relationship, excuse me, sometimes when you enter into a relationship, it's only then you know these things are in you. Mm. You didn't even know this was in you before because right. you didn't have the appetite. You didn't, it, nothing was arousing that appetite. So now here you are, this good Christian, love God in church, meet this person. Okay, this is great. Mm. I've done everything right. I want to live clean. And then you start to feel things that you've never felt before. before right. And you thought you'd had the victory over it. And so then the devil comes in and starts condemning you. You're useless. You mm, see you. Saved. Well, you're not saved. Why are you thinking that? But we got to pray, come before God and say, God, help me, forgive me, change me, give me a new heart. There's grace mm. for God to restore us as yeah. we focus on him. Exactly. And uh, you start to realize a God that will love you like that. Yeah. Jesus that will love us and forgive us and help us. You don't want to um, offend him. No. And that's what keeps you from it. You'd be like, right. no, you don't, you, I don't want to offend him. Maintaining purity in a relationship is remembering that that person belongs to God. Exactly. They don't They're belong a child to of you. God, yep. They're a child of you. And if you really love God mm -hmm. and you really love them, you would not def want to defile them. Mm -hmm. And so you have to remember love will wait. Lust cannot wait. Love that line. Yeah, it, it, love can always wait. Yeah. And uh, love will never wait. Uh, sorry, lust will never wait. So when you feel that, you know, it says, I love you too much to wait. No, that's no, lust. That's lust. You, that's lust. Yeah. You, you're lust in there. You and wait. Yeah. And so you gotta, you got to realize that, you know, this, it, this thing is bigger. And I want the blessing of God in my relationship. Yeah. You want to start your relationship right. Put on the new man. Yeah. As he says in Ephesians, put yeah. on the new man. You want this relationship to be blessed. So you want so, to be on it. Yeah. So if you're, if you are listening to this, you're not saved or you're backslidden. and Listen, God has Thank sent you. his son, Jesus Christ. There is, if we're willing to repent, turn from our sin, he will make us brand new. Yes. And he will help us and change us. And if you've, even if you've done things which you're ashamed of and you wish you didn't have done, the Bible speaks about, he makes us brand new. He yes. can remove that shame. Jesus Absolutely. bore the shame mm -hmm. so that uh, would remove the shame from us. Mm -hmm. And though we don't deserve it, Jesus was the one who died on the cross for us so mm -hmm. in the link there's going to be a prayer you say that prayer you mean it from your heart god will save you he'll deliver you and he'll make you brand new and Amen. all the guilt and the shame can be removed yes and you can be brand new and start new new yes. relationships new you new everything so yeah let's leave it there and then uh we'll cover some more stuff on part three yeah see you guys next time big up Bye. peace <laughs>